Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Um, wait a minute. Um, today, I want to minister to you before, um, before I teach. And the Lord is saying to you this. There is no problem in that room, in any one of your lives, in one, any one of your circumstances. There is no problem that God cannot solve. Because the Bible says that he is able to do more exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Amen. So when you write down what you're asking of the Lord, the Lord says, oh, I can do a whole lot more than that. That's found in Ephesians 3, verse 20. But notice that it says he is able he has the ability he's able to do exceeding abundantly he's able he, he's telling us his ability but whether we receive that exceeding abundance is a different story how many of you would like to know how to receive more than you can even ask? How many of you would like to know? Amen. Amen. Today, I'm going to be teaching on how to release the unlimited God. He has no limitations. How can we release him into our lives? The Bible teaches us, the Bible teaches us there, there are keys to the kingdom. Uh, do any of you have a key in your pocket? You have a key? You have a no. key? No. Have a key. Yeah. You know that a key is very small. But a tiny little key can open up a great palace. And because that key is so small, some people just are careless with it and they'll throw it in their pocket and they'll lose it and then they can't get into that palace. Or they neglect the key because they think it's too small. It's never going to work. 
Like when David faced Goliath, he used the key of the truth of the word of God. And notice that he sent the word first. He spoke the word first. And then whatever action he took with his slingshot, it followed the pathway of the word. You remember that Mary came to Jesus in John chapter 2. Mary came to Jesus and said something. And she and she did what we do. Yes. Did you hear me? Yes, please go on. Mary did what we do in prayer. And Jim Mari Day and Maria Pran Prakama Gorson. She said, Jesus, they have no wine. Isn't that how we come to Jesus? We say, Jesus, I need this. I need that. I have no wine. I have no money. I have no strength. I have no health or I have whatever. We come to Jesus like that. And Jesus said to her, Mary, you did not connect with me. I have nothing to do with you. Why? Why did he say that? Because everything that Jesus takes in his hands, he multiplies it. Amen. When when they put the little lunch in his hand, which was too small, but that was the key to feeding five thousand people. Jesus multiplied that which was too small. So Jesus did not want to multiply, they have no wine. What if Jesus would have taken in his hands, because everything he takes in his hands and he touches, it multiplies. Do you want him to multiply? They have no wine, they have no wine, they have no wine, they have no wine, they have no wine. So then Mary is thinking, I have to say something different. I have to make him Lord. I have to bow before him. He is in charge, not me. 
वहाँ नहीं कौन सा था अनेरा जो इंचार्ज हुए थे सो शी सेड टू द सर्वेंट्स अनिवार्य तो सब बड़े बन गए whatever he says you do it not what i'm saying what he says hallelujah hallelujah she bowed before him in other words and she said you are king you are lord i worship you you are in charge hallelujah I want you to turn, if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 16 and verse 19, and we'll see one of the keys of the kingdom. Jesus said to Peter, and I will read, Brother Pete Deepak, I'll read one like sentence and then you translate or you can read uh, however you want to do it. I don't know. Um, yeah. You want me just to do one sentence and then stop? Okay. Okay, and he said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever is already bound in heaven, you bind it on this earth. Whatever is loosed in heaven, you loose it on this earth. Let me ask you a question. Is sickness bound in heaven? Yes, it's not bound in heaven. Sickness is not bound in heaven. Yes, so, 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 so there are people who are sick in heaven. So sickness doesn't belong in heaven, right? There will be no disease, no sickness in the heaven. That's right. Yes. Because sickness is a result of sin, not your personal sin per se, but sin. Some people read in the English version, I read the Greek. In the English, it says, uh, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. That's wrong because earth does not control heaven. Heaven controls earth. Hmm. So the keys to the kingdom for the kingdom to rule and reign in our lives is to be in agreement with heaven.
Yes. I'm just waiting for them to have time to write. Yeah, they could go behind. That's key number one. Why does that mean? Now we go to key number two. And, and we're learning how to release the unlimited God into our lives. Because he's able to do more than we can imagine or think or ask. So number two is live by the word. Matthew 4.4. Jesus was standing in the middle of a trial, you can say, a test in the wilderness. His circumstance was not great and wonderful, no. But when the devil tempted him, Jesus said, it is written. And he declared the verse, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We have to declare the word. Number three. John 6.63 is the third key that we have. John 6.63. John 6, 63, 63, yeah. Jesus said, the words that I speak, he did not say the words that I speak, Think. Pardon? He did not say the words that I think or that I know or that I memorized or that I wrote on the paper. He said the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. <laughs> Let me explain. Let me illustrate. What if you put 35 or 100 Bibles from the floor all the way up to the ceiling? 100 Bibles. When somebody, when somebody comes to that room, are they going to get saved because those Bibles are standing there? No. No. Because somebody needs to open it up and they need to speak it out and it becomes spirit because it's your spirit speaking. It went into your spirit and your spirit is speaking now is spirit and life when it's spoken, not when you're just thinking about it or it's sitting there. Mm. 
स्वीकार कर हृदय में राख् पर्च And that's why Jesus said, "Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Speak it to every creature. Hallelujah." The word coming out of your mouth becomes a supernatural power of God that goes out and convicts people and heals them and brings them to the altar. When you preach the word, something supernatural is felt is happening to the people who can hear that word and to you because you can hear it as well. Yes. Amen. Amen. Number four, the, the fourth key. Don't forget, these are the keys to unlock the kingdom of heaven in our lives. Number four is the fourth key is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing destroys the yoke of bondage. The anointing, the anointing only functions when you declare God's words. The anointing will come upon you when you obey the Lord. When I sit in um, in the services where I'm going to preach, and I look at the pulpit, I'm sitting down and I'm looking up at the pulpit, they're doing the sing and praise and worship and I, I still don't have no anointing to preach, I just don't, I'm looking at them. But when it's my turn and I get up and I walk and I stand behind the pulpit, and I open my mouth and I begin to speak the word, the anointing comes. If God called you, he will anoint you.
Brother Deepak, did you hear me? Yes, yes. yes, go on. If he called you, he will anoint you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't hear you. You're not interpreting. You're not translating. Yes, yes, please, uh, please repeat again. If God called you to preach, he will anoint you as you take your position. That's Isaiah 10, 27. Yes. Number five. Ask in his name. If, if you have your Bibles, I would like you to look at this John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. I'll read it in English and then you can read it in, in your language, okay? Yes. And whatsoever just look at that whatsoever you shall ask whatsoever you need whatsoever you ask in my name that will i do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I love verse 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Amen. In other words, Jesus said, I will not send angels. I will not send anyone else. If you ask in my name, I will get up and I will do it for you. So ask in his name. Now, key number six. It's, it's found in Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Mark 1, verse 15. Marcus Eko Pandra. It says there, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In English, that word repent means return to the highest position again. Very angry for Kerano, Mam Karim, right? Postabo, 
Return to the highest position seated at the right hand of the Father. Ephesians 2 6. He seated us at his own right hand. So if the kingdom of God is not operating in your life, and you're limited, you don't have the unlimited God operating, it means you need to return to that highest position. And when, when, and then it says, okay, repent. And then it says, in other words, drop all the bad news that you've been speaking. All the bad news, get rid of it. Turn away from the bad news. And start believing the good news. That Jesus loves you. That Jesus cares for you. He is yearning to bless you. He wants you to have everything good and healthy and strong in your life. I remember one evangelist saying this. He said every morning, he says, he looks in the mirror and he says something good is going to happen to you today. Say it together tonight, today. Something good is going to happen to me today. Amen. Amen. So that's why Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 19, to 20, actually, 18 to 20, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the good news. God confirms the gospel or the good news. God confirms his word. And then key number seven, how to release the unlimited God into our lives. Key number seven. 
अनि परमेश्वर ने अनि मैं कसरी तेरे वहाँ को सब दिखने आऊँ जता मार्क 16 वर्सेस 15 टू 20 मार्क वर्सेस 16 वर्स मार्क 16 वर्सेस 15 टू 20 अमिले मोती सोर मोती सोर देखो तो देखी अरे बीस तो नहीं तो कौन देखी तो and there's a lot of things there but one thing is lay hands on the sick and they shall recover If Jesus is living in you and he is, then your hands become his hands. Amen. And then point number nine, key number nine. No number, tiny number no. No, I think I go to eight. I, I did I did seven now, eight. I'm sorry, eight. The point number eight. Point number eight. Preach the word. God, God confirms his word. So preach it. You know, this is this is this is very, very interesting. Because he said, you go first and preach, and I'll come behind you and I'll confirm the word. So you preach the word first. And then you wait and make an altar service so God can come then and confirm his word. You must expect Expect God to fulfill His word at that service. In Genesis one verses one to three. God spoke, let there be light. And then he waited until the light appeared. He waited for the results. You must expect results as you declare the word. Are you done? 
Point number nine, the ninth key. Oh, no, no, I didn't have even know it. He said, all power, not just some, all power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Some people say, oh, the devil has so much power. That is not true. The only way the devil can, because Jesus said, I've got all the power that either is true or not, and it is true. Jesus had all the power in heaven and earth. The devil has not. But how come the devil is still working on this earth? Why? Because mankind gives him power. When you don't know the word and you're allowing Satan to work, Yes, you'll give the power that you have, which is Jesus is in you, but you're giving that power to the devil to work. All right, Let, let's learn a lesson here now, close after this. Yes. God is a spirit. And the devil is a spirit. But in order for God to work on earth, he needs our physical body, someone who is a citizen of earth so that he can work through us. My father passed away. He's 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 in heaven. And he's he's not speaking, he's not doing anything because he's a spirit now. So he has no right to work on this earth. No right. So God is looking for someone who is a citizen of this earth so God can work through them because he's a spirit. And when we speak God's word, we speak the word of the living God, the Bible, we preach the good news. God, by his spirit, comes and works through us. And the devil is a spirit. And when we speak words that belong to his side, the Bible says he wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so when we speak those words,
So by speaking God's word, we invite God by speaking uh, negative words, doubting, fearful words, we invite Satan to work. When you speak God's word, you're authorizing God to work. Hallelujah. You're inviting him. But when you speak evil words, complaining, murmuring words, you're inviting the evil one to work. that's why Romans 1 16 says the gospel or the good news is the power of God unto salvation, unto healing, unto deliverance, unto blessing. Hallelujah. The good news is the power of God. That's Romans 1 16. Praise the Lord. Amen. Another key in our lives to release God to work is Psalm 22, verse 3, and I'm going to be finishing. Mm. Wow. Psalms. Psalm 22, verse 3. Okay, Psalm 22, verse 3. Yeah, don't sing wrong. By the day, go to me for the answer. But I go to the point of my polytra, the answer, the other man. In English, it says, God inhabits or lives in the praises of his people think of it you can praise god and god is going to be right there on top of you hallelujah by praise, we build a throne for God. And Revelation 22 1 says, wherever God is sitting on a throne, there are springs of living water underneath the throne flowing out for the healing of the nations. So if this God is going to be sitting on the throne, we build him with praise. There will be springs of living water flow out of our own lives. Hallelujah. In John 7, verse 37 and 38, Jesus said, John 7, John 7 37, 38. 
thirty seven and thirty eight. You know, thirty score, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty eight. Jesus said, "If you believe on me, as the Scripture had said, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water." Hallelujah. If you want these rivers to flow, raise your hands. You can stand up and raise your hands, and we're going to pray and ask God to let these rivers flow out of our lives. Lord, Lord Jesus, I pray that you see these hands and that you flood them with your living water right now in the name of Jesus. Let rivers begin to flow out of their lives into other people's lives. To heal, to deliver, to set free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.